Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentech. Specifically, today we're going to be doing some card reviews because the Price of Power Once Upon a Fire expansion has just been released and all the fancy new 26 cards are available to everyone right now. So uh, what we're going to do today is go through each and every single card, check out their new abilities, some of the new keywords and just give our opinion on that. And so we can start this as a discussion point in the comment section down below so we can talk that further over there. So uh, let's head into the deck building. So there we are. As you might have noticed, there are already some, uh, yeah, I've been playing around with some of the new archetypes already, but that's gonna have to wait until another video because we're here for the new card. So let's select the Price of Power expansion card set and we'll go through all of these starting from the bottom to the top. Which means that first up we have the Mage Assassin, already a juicy card to talk about because this has been a controversy card even before the expansion was released. So two power, four provisions and on deploy you damage an enemy unit by two, you can choose your target. But if you move this card to the top of your deck during your turn, he summons himself to a random allied row and damages a random enemy unit by two. So basically always giving you four points, but of course, if he is moved to the top of the deck by one of your other cards, that's a free four points on top of that. Basically looking like a skirmisher from uh, a Twilight Sock skirmisher from Skellige. Uh, that also works in a slightly different way, of course. When you discard him, you get the four points from the graveyard. But basically, this is the same uh, point potential that you're getting here. There is, of course, a new card that also works very well with this card. We'll talk about that when this card comes along. Next up, we have a Syndicate 4 provision card. 4 power, the Vigilantes. Whenever a bounty is placed on an enemy unit, damage it by 2. This expansion has focused on the bounty archetype uh, for Syndicate, so that's what we'll be seeing here. And this is just a uh, very basic kind of damage engine. We rarely see one of those, but this is an automatic damage dealer whenever you apply a bounty, which is very handy with some of the other bounty cards already, because this means that when you apply a bounty, it already damages that unit a little bit, so you can more easily take it out with something like the Professor. It might just add enough damage to kill a six power unit, for example. Or of course, with the new card that we'll be talking about that does three damage on top of applying a bounty. Uh, just boosting that up to five. Simple, but very effective to my mind. Then for monsters, we're uh, actually, this is the first time we're looking at the Sabbath, the Sabbath, Th Sabbath, Th Sabbath, the Sabbath keyword. So Sabbath is new, but the Witch Apprentice, four power for four provisions, and Sabbath at the end of your turn, boost yourself by two. So basically a beast, but the keyword is the most important part here, because Sabbath uh, only triggers when you have at least one row that has 25 points or more in total. So it doesn't matter whether that card is on that same row or not, it, you just have to have a row that has 25 or more points. Not as easy as you might think, it's gonna need, well, require at least two, maybe three cards to get to that, but a lot of the newer cards just uh, focus on high powered units, so uh, it kind of fits really, really well. And this is also a relic card, which will be important later. Then Northern Realms focuses on the mage archetype. Uh, you'll see that uh, more often coming up in a minute as well. So four power, four provisions, and we also have another new keyword. It's only the second one. Uh, there's only two new keywords here, but Patience. Uh, order when you're on the melee row, damage an enemy unit by zero. But patience means that as long as this card is on the board, at the end of their turn, they will increase the value on that card by one permanently. So as long as the order ability is not used. So if you keep this card on the board, for example, for three turns, then use the order ability, you will do three damage. But if that card goes to the graveyard and you resurrect it somehow or you replay it, that three points will still be there and will continue to tick from there. So patience is very hidden value somehow. So you, if you can manage to pull those cards back or replay them, the patience value will still be at that point. Then one of the neutral cards is, this is an artifact, so the Megascope. On deploy, you pick a bronze allied unit, so a unit that's already on the field, and after two turns, you spawn a base copy of that card to the right of the Megascope. This will have a lot of new uses to my mind, especially with uh, something like the Sensual Deathwish deck that I created uh, a while back. 
since you can just copy more succubuses. Basically, every single bronze card can now have multiple copies on the board with this card. It's going to be, I think, a difficult card for CDPR to balance everything around. Because this just means you have a, that you have another two copies of any single bronze card possibly in your deck. So this might be hefty. Then we have teleportation and other spells. So this is the second neutral card. Um, a spell card that resets an allied unit's power. But if it's a bronze unit that you're targeting, you replay this unit instead. So basically the old, very old replay ability from uh, way back when. So replaying means that you basically put this card, the card that you select, back into your hand. And in one fluid motion, you put it back onto the board. That means that it loses all status effects. It loses all boosts, all damage, all everything basically. It just resets to its default state. Aside from, of course, strengthening effects. And we'll talk about that in a minute because that have, has been introduced, well, reintroduced as well. But a very cool card that uh, basically also allows you to replay bronze cards um, deploy ability. So like if you select an Indraga Larva with this, you will pull it from the board, but play it again, giving you three Indraga Larvas from the two that you started out with. Um, but it probably has more uh, clever uses than I just make it out to be now. Then Skellige, another alchemy card for Skellige, the Tears of Siren. Uh, Skellige is trying to focus on the weather archetype in this expansion. So with this card you spawn rain on an enemy row for two turns and then spawn a deafening siren, so a two power beast on the opposite rows on your side of the field, basically giving you up to six points for an alchemy card, which is pretty basic, but the extra support for the weather archetype is gonna be very, very nice. And then we have Squiatel, three power, uh, five provisions for the Whisperer of Dol Blatana. An elven mage with Veil, who, as long as she's on the board, whenever you play a special card, you spawn a copy of herself and then reduce the counter to zero. So. I mean, the description here says remove a counter, but the counter starts at one, so it only does this once. But of course, the copy can do that again. So you can start with a three power whisperer, then play a special card, you get a second three power whisperer. If you then play another special card, there's gonna be another one, and so on and so forth. So this could be an army of whisperers of Dolblatana, basically always giving you three points on top of any special card that you play. I think this might be very powerful with nature decks. Um, on top of the three ants that you spawn, you will be spawning just her as well. Uh, of course, the other hand, the other problem with that is that your board is going to be quickly filled by units because you basically generate two units for every card that you play. But still, this could be very, very powerful, especially since she's an elf as well. Um, there could be some really strong combos in the elven archetype with this. Then the Skellige rare card, the Melusine Cultist. So three power, one armor, and starts, uh, well, doesn't start, just has five provisions. And has an order ability that also allows you, him to spawn rain for two turns on an enemy row. Aside from the order ability, he doesn't have seal, so you have to wait a turn for uh, to be able to spawn that rain. But there's also a passive ability that at the end of your turn, if there is rain on the opposing side, you boost the unit to the right by one. Meaning that this is basically a drummer as long as there's rain on the other side. But if there is storm, so Skellige storm, on the opposite row, you boost the adjacent units by one instead. So basically an Anna Stranger. Uh, on the board as long as there is storm on the opposing row. So this could be very powerful, but it is very weak. So it is as fragile as a drummer as well. So the same power and armor levels. But uh, yeah, this could be strong, but I feel like it's just too low of a power level to uh, yeah be very effective in a, in a deck like that. But we'll see once the meta starts evolving. Then another Squiretel card, 4 power, 5 provisions, the Sorceress of Dol Blatana. So an order ability, again, create and play a bronze Squiretel special card with a provision cost equal to or lower than this card's power. Um, it is very powerful, but of course it's an order ability, so you need to keep this uh, lovely lady alive for at least one turn to be able to do this. But create and playing a bronze Squiretel special card that could include something like Nature's Rebuke, so 5 power um, nature card. And just in general, the nature uh, synergy with this card is very, very strong potentially, but you need to keep her alive 
uh, before she can actually trigger her ability. So a good trade-off, a good balance again, as with most of the new cards. Then we go back to Nilfgaard, and this is the card that I was talking about before. So the Blight Maker, four power, five provisions, and on deploy you move a card in your deck to the top of it. Of course, very, very good with that other card, the Mage Assassin. Because uh, even if it was a mage, you spawned the Guardian in this row, basically giving you another three points. Um, combine that with the mage that you pulled from the deck, this will play for 11 four or five provisions, which is very, very strong. And I've seen that a few times already in the matches that I've played so far. If it's not a uh, mage, but it is a special card, you spawn and play the cow carcass. You might remember this from the rot tosser. It's a spying unit that at the end of the, your opponent's next turn will destroy itself and poison the adjacent units that it was placed in between. Uh, so basically giving you synergy with status effect decks as well on top of what it could do with mage decks as well. So very versatile, very powerful card. Then the second bronze card for monsters, Gan Kian of, or Seian, I don't know how to pronounce this, but starts at 5 power with 4 or 5 provisions, is a relic and that's what I wanted to focus on because most of the cards will be uh, relics and the deployability um, needs relics because uh, on deploy you increase this unit's base power by 2 for each adjacent relic. Meaning that if you put this in between two relics, the base power of this unit will go up to 9. Meaning that this, it's not a boost, it's a base power. So it's going to be a white um, 9 on top of this card. And if you then manage to replay it, like for example, say with the new teleportation card, and do that again, it will go up to 13 and so on and so forth. Because even if this unit dies, it will keep this base power. If it goes back to the deck, graveyard, hand, doesn't matter. It will keep that new base power. That's what strengthening basically does. But they don't use the term strengthening anymore. I shouldn't use that just to avoid confusion. But increasing the unit's base power is permanent. And then we get a new crime card for Syndicate Hysteria. Also, of course, factoring in with the bounty archetype. So place a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by three. If it is, If it already has a bounty, double the damage to six damage. So this is the card that I was talking about. If you have Vigilantes on the board and you play Hysteria, then you will basically do, uh, well, place a bounty on the unit and then do five damage because the Vigilante is doing an extra two and you most likely will kill that unit in one go with Hysteria. So very, very powerful card in the right circumstances. Needs a bit of setup, but uh, in most cases you will be able to pull this off because I've played a lot of matches so far with uh, just this archetype. So it, it feels really, really powerful and very aggressive as well. Then the second Bronze Northern Realms card, Casting Contest, a spell where you boost an allied unit by 5, but if it's a Bronze, you also reset its order ability and give it zeal. So this could potentially be really good. I've been going through the deck building, I don't see a really good target for this just yet, aside from maybe like the correct Marine giving you another 4 boost, uh, possibly going up to 9, but I think it's the highest that you can go. Um, I might of course have missed a few things, um, but that seems like the highest combination. It doesn't really fit well with the mages archetype, so I'm gonna have to do some more research on this and maybe you can help me out with that. If you have any tips on how to use this card properly, let me know in the comment section. But for now it seems like a 9 for 5, which is still pretty good. Um, and just allowing you to reset an order ability is always very nice. Then we're staying in Northern Realms, because uh, with Istret, uh, if you read any of the books you know who Istred is, it's basically the uh, former lover of Yennefer. Starts at 6 power for 7 provisions, has zeal on his order ability and also has patience. So remember, the values that are in between those brackets will go up at the end of every turn as long as you don't use his order ability. And his order ability is very, very interesting. So on order, you draw one card and then shuffle back one card. Whenever you draw a unit, boost it by one. If it is not a unit, you boost Istred himself by one. So starting out at seven for seven, if you use the order ability immediately, but remember patience will increase this constantly. So possibly allowing you to pull up to nine cards at a maximum, the absolute maximum, if you play Istred at the very first uh, card that you play and then use him at the very end of the round, a maximized round, which is not something that's gonna happen, but it's cool to think about. You draw nine cards and shuffle those nine cards back into the deck. And all of those cards will be boosted by one, unless it's a special card, he will boost himself by one. So very, very cool. 
and it's starting to grow into an archetype for Northern Realms where you start boosting in your deck, which is usually something that is uh, reserved for Squire itself. But Northern Realms has been steadily gaining support for this and some more deck manipulation as well. So really looking forward to the creativity that this card is going to bring. Then the first gold card for monsters, the the, I was going to say the Cat Catcher Rest, but no, the Rat Catcher Rest starts at 9 power for 7 provisions. It's also a Relic, so that fits with the other cards. And then whenever this unit is damaged, you reduce its base power by 1. Meaning that you not only take damage, but also reduce the power and base power by 1 on top of that. Um, but on Sabbath, this, uh, this ability is cancelled. So if you have a row of 25 units, uh, of 25 power or less in total, you will cancel the uh, reduction ability. And of course, she has also a uh, cool passive ability, another, well, a better passive ability, that whenever you play a relic, you also increase this unit's base power by one. So again, increasing the base power as long as you have Sabbath on the field. Well, not Sabbath, is, Sabbath is not required for that uh, passive ability, but it is required to cancel the damage reduction, because um, this might really hurt if you don't do the uh, Sabbath ability here. Then. Nilfgaard got another very powerful thinning tool, so Dead Man's Tongue, a spell for 7 provisions that allows you to banish a card from your deck and then boost an allied unit by that card's provision cost. Doesn't sound too much at first glance, it just, well, you need to get rid of that card, so it is thinning, but if the banished card was a bronze, you can banish another bronze card from your deck and boost the same unit by that card's provision cost. So a very strong boosting card, but on top of that, it allows you to pull two cards from your deck and just toss them away, uh, which is used a lot these days. Uh, well, these days, uh, since the expansion, I've seen that come up a lot just because of the, the very strong thinning tool that this is. Just two cards in one go is super powerful to get your deck down to as little cards as possible, as few cards as possible. Then back to Syndicate, Fabian Hale starts at 4 power with, uh, well, for 8 provisions, has Intimidate, so will increase his power whenever you play a crime card, and on deploy you place a bounty on an enemy unit. Not that powerful at the start, but if there already was an enemy unit with bounty, you gain coins equal to the base power of that unit. So potentially a very high profit card uh, if you manage to play this right on a high powered unit, of course. But other than that, I feel it requires a little bit too much setup. Uh, I haven't used this card in my bounty deck so far, because I feel like it just requires too much setup to uh, properly use, and it all will only go to, to 8, eight uh, points usually. Um, so yeah, there are better cards for the 8 provision slot. Then Skellige again, 4 power, 8 provisions, the Bride of the Sea, another Druid, joins the fray for Skellige and her deployability is amazing. So play an alchemy card from your graveyard with a provision cost of four or less, which is already good. But on top of that, you can also increase the provision cost of that card by the total duration of rain and storm on your opponent's side. So for example, if you've used all your Rage of the Sea leader ability, you will have um, four turns of uh, rain on your opponent's side of the board, so you could pull a alchemy card of eight provisions or less. And Sigdrifa's Rites, remember the revive alchemy card that just pulls any card from your uh, graveyard and summons it to a row. That has been uh, buffed to eight provisions, so this could be used immediately to get another Sigdrifa's Rite off. So very, very powerful card. I think in a Druid alchemy deck, it's uh, an auto include right now because um, it's just so powerful. It is a druid and she also plays an alchemy card. It's just too good of a combo to uh, pass up. Then Squiatel again, Vanadane. Vanadane, six power and eight provisions. Um, Whaley hasn't actually changed, but I, I shouldn't get ahead of things. But on deploy, you move two cards from your hand to the bottom of your deck and you add Waylay to your hand for each card that you've moved away from your hand that way. So basically, if you have two crappy bronzes in your hand and want to upgrade those to the Waylay card, then you can do just that. On top of that, whenever you play Waylay with this card on the board, you spawn an extra Elven Deadeye to the row, which is very powerful in the Elven archetype these days. Elven Deadeyes are so strong. Waylay, if you don't remember anymore, damages an enemy unit by three, and if you kill it with that you also spawn an Elven Deadeye. So Vanadane is a very, very cool engine card for the Elven archetype. Um, doesn't really have any other uses than this, but uh, still, in that archetype, this man is gonna thrive. 
And now we're staying in Square Tile for the legendary card. So Francesca Finderbeer is back, the uh, original, uh, well, Square Tile leader. Starts at 7 power for 10 provisions, has Veil, so it can be locked, poisoned, or whatever. And whenever you play a special card, you remove one of her counters. So her counter starts at 3. So once you've played 3 special cards, her ability actually triggers and allows you to spawn and play a doomed copy of the last special card you played. So it's going to be tricky to pull this off, but um, if the sequencing is alright, you will manage to play a... Um, whatever special card that you want twice. So this could be on Aeromancy, this could be um, Nature's Caress, uh, Nature's Gift, it's gonna be, it, it could be anything. Uh, especially if you start looking at what uh, amazing gold um, special cards that Squirtel has access to. This is potentially powerful. Of course, you need to keep it alive for three turns. Well, for, yeah, for three turns. So what the first one that she's played and then the two turns after that, because uh, then the last turn you will be able to play that second, uh, that third uh, special card to pull off this ability. So potentially powerful, but you see with her power level and her provision cost, she's, uh, yeah, balanced pretty well. So you don't necessarily lose the game if you can pull this off, because it's going to be pretty tricky to do. But uh, yeah, this feels like the um, the special card archetype in uh, Squiretail is back in full. Because there's been a few other adjustments to Squiretail cards that uh, help this archetype out a lot more as well. Then the Northern Realms legendary card, Gerhard of L. 7 power for 11 provisions this time, has zeal and of course patience. And his order ability allows you to create and play a 4 provision spell. But since he has patience, the provision cost for that spell will increase every turn. So for provision spell could be something like uh, what is for provisions these days. Um, well, I was going to say rune word, but rune word has been changed. Uh, but look, like for example, the uh, teleportation spell that we just saw is for provisions. You can use that. But of course, once you go to five, you get also thunder. You get uh, any any of the uh, five five uh, damage cards that are spells. Go to six, you get the new rune word, and the new rune word is very cool because it allows you to play uh, a Northern Realms bronze mage, which is most likely going to be a spell weaver, uh, and give it a shield. So. This just gels really, really well with the new Mages archetype in Northern Realms. Um, and I'm really looking forward to uh, what's going to be definitely the first deck guide that I'm going to do. It's going to be the new Spellfire deck, because the support is finally here for me to wreck shop with this, uh, this archetype. It's going to be really cool. But we were talking about Legendary cards. So back to Skellige, Fulmar. Six, six power this time, so no seven. So it could be destroyed by quite a few uh, six damage cards. But also 12 provisions, so very hefty. It gives you an idea of how strong this card is. Because on deploy, you spawn and play tiers of Siren. So the alchemy card. So remember, again, a druid that is a, well, is a druid and plays an alchemy card. And on his order abilities, if you can keep him alive for one more turn, you can replace Rain on an enemy row with Storm of the same duration. So if you don't remember, Rain is the uh, weather effect that damages two random units on a row at the start of their turn. Storm damages all units on that row at the start of the turn. So against Swarm decks, this just wrecks shop. Because uh, it allows you to place Storm wherever you want, wherever you've put a lot of rain on the board. Couple that with the Rage of the Sea ability, and you always have rain at your disposal to just transform into Storm. And there's nothing that your opponent can do about it once this uh, order ability hits. So yeah, I've been a bit late with my uh, weather decks. Uh, well, a bit early with my weather decks, because I've done a Skellige weather deck and a Monster weather deck so far. And now we're starting to get uh, more support for Skellige. So I'm going to have to re view that deck because this is yeah this is definitely aching for another deck guide then the poster girl the poster woman of this expansion the witch finder the syndicate legendary card seven power 12 provisions and on deploy you spawn three syndicate crowns syndicate crowns are artifact cards you could see them over here that take a place on the board but they have an order ability that you can do uh, use whenever you want that just gives you one extra coin and banishes it itself. So unlike any other uh, artifact card that's on the board, uh, it will destroy itself once you've used it. So it doesn't keep, um, well, taking place on the board, which is really good. 
Aside from that, the Witch Finder, I'm always tempted to say Witch Hunter, but the Witch Finder also has a passive ability that at the end of your turn, if no enemy unit has a bounty, you can place a bounty on the highest power enemy unit on the board of your opponent, of course. So this is basically a bounty engine that automatically just tags any high powered unit on your opponent's side. So you can, it's, it's ready to get targeted by a lot of damage. Because remember, if you have the Witch Finder on the board, that means that there will be a bounty, most likely will be a bounty on the board by the start of your next turn, which means that the high Hysteria card already does six damage. So even high powered units, you will be able to take out with ease if you have some engine set up for this. Uh, Cause this, I played around with this card. It's really, really good. And I think we're at the last legendary card. So Nilfgaard got the most uh, hefty, well, the, the priciest legendary card. Also with the lowest power. So Rins, um, if you've read the books, you know who Rins is, but I might talk about that a little bit later. Five power. 13 provisions, but the ability is uh, just as powerful as the provisions make it out to be. Because on deploy, you look at the top three units in your deck. You can move one unit to the graveyard and then destroy an enemy unit with power equal to that unit's power. So for example, if you destroy um, a five power unit in this process, you can kill a five power unit on, the, on your opponent's side of the board. But the order ability is the sweet spot. The order ability, so you need to keep him alive for one turn, remember that, allows you to set the power of a unit to match the number of cards in your deck. This has two ways that this can go, but the most obvious way, of course, is to use this card at the very end of a match where your deck is completely empty. This allows you to just kill any unit on your opponent's board, because of course you set the power of a unit to match the number of cards in your deck. The number of cards in your deck is zero, so you can set the power of an enemy unit to zero, killing it. So this is basically a damage dealer, a thinner, so because it moves a card from your graveyard uh, from your deck to the graveyard and an instant kill card if you manage to set this up all right. The other way that you could technically use this is to have a very, very filled deck. For example, with another 20 cards, that would be crazy, but it is technically possible. Then you could uh, use uh, rings to put one of your own units to 20 power, which is the other way that you could use this card. But of course, most likely this is gonna be used as a damage dealer and a destruction card. Cause Rins, yeah, with his, uh, his powers that weren't really his own, he uh, is, is very much capable of uh, wrecking some uh, havoc. Oh, and I forgot about this. I almost forgot about the last legendary card. I told, uh, I said, I said Nilfgaard was going to be the last one. No, Monsters is the last one. Monsters, she who knows. Very mysterious card at 10 power for 13 provisions. Uh, also a relic, of course, because all the new monster cards are relics. I don't know what she's doing. I think she's creating like a monster out of blood. Um, but it's, it's really, really creepy art. But her ability, Sabbath at the end of the round, give resilience to the highest base power unit on your side of the battlefield. So resilience, of course, meaning that that unit that she marks will stay on the board for the next round. Resilience in a monster deck. I think this is a first um, and it's really, really powerful. The one thing that I want to warn you about, do not use this with Wygern. If Wygern gains resilience, he will die once you go into the next round. Because uh, when you move to the next round, any resilient units lose their armor. Wygern dies if he doesn't have armor. So yeah, Wygern dies. Um, so potentially powerful card, but of course very tall. Could easily be destroyed by a tall removal. But still, this is... Uh, one hell of a card, especially in that Relic archetype now. Very, very powerful indeed. And that's them. That's all the new cards in the uh, the first phase of the Price of Power expansion, the Once Upon a Pyre phase. Um, of course, there's going to be just as many cards in August and another similar batch in October. So we're looking forward to that. But only this set of cards has shuffled the meta around so significantly that I feel like this is going to be a very fun season. Because, uh, yeah, as you can see on the side here, I've made a lot of decks already that I want to try out. And I haven't I haven't even touched two of the factions yet. So no Nilfgaard is quite tell deck just yet. And I want to just try everything out. Um, but right now I'm just pushing to pro. And then we'll be able to uh, start working on the next deck, I'd say. You have a, have a bit of a, a teaser here about who, what that is going to be. 
But with that said, uh, let's end this video right here. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the 26 new cards in this uh, expansion because I'm really looking forward to uh, trying all of them out. What do you think about all these new cards? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Are there cards that you feel are too overpowered, underpowered? I want to know. I want to talk about this. I can talk about these cards all day. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below and we can talk about that further. You can also talk to me on Twitter at Trovinuts, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And uh, otherwise, if you like this video, leave a like. And uh, oh, the only thing that leaves me with is to thank you all enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Thank you, goodbye, and stay nutty, as always.